Okay, thank you for joining me back again. Um, now, we'll talk about something called eigen problems, um, and these are very important in quantum mechanics, and and you'll see how they actually simplify quite a bit of what we'll do. So, as we discussed above, operators sometimes act on functions to produce meaningless results. Other times, they actually act on a function to produce meaningful results. Okay. One such case is this. Sometimes an operator will act on some function f of x, and what it'll do is it'll produce a constant, and we'll call that constant lambda in this case. If you like, you can call it a or b or c or x or y or z or whatever you like. Um, but you get the same function that the operator operated on back. Okay, so the unique thing about these functions is they an operator acts on the function, and what you get is an, a constant and the same function back. Now that now that constant, it, it could be a real number, imaginary number, or complex number. Okay, and the operator can be real, complex, or imaginary as well. But if this occurs, then this is called an eigen problem or an eigenvalue problem. Here f of x is called the eigenfunction, okay? And eigenfunction, eigen, I think, just means proper. So it's the proper value or the proper function. Um, and for that proper function, there's an associated constant lambda, which is the eigen or the proper value, okay, of the linear operator. So each or so linear operators have eigenfunctions and eigenvalues, okay? That's really important to know. Linear functions have eigenfunctions, or sorry, linear operators um, are associated with eigenfunctions and they produce eigenvalues. So one such case is the Ham or the Schrodinger wave equation. If you look at it, it's actually written in operator form. So here the Hamiltonian operator has an associated eigen function, um, psi of x, and what you get is the same eigenfunction back, but also an associated eigenvalue. In this case, the eigenvalue is the energy of the system, okay? Now, the important thing to note is we are only interested in real eigenvalues because our quantities, um, as you can see, E can only be real, right? You can't have a negative or imaginary, or sorry, you can have an imaginary or a complex E. Um, it needs to be a real number. So that's one important thing to keep in mind. So now the question that we're going to do is for this function, um, f of x is equal to e to the exponent i k x, um, is it an eigenfunction of this operator? And if it is, what is the eigenvalue? So remember, in order to be an eigenfunction, it needs to sat uh, satisfy this condition. Okay, so the operator is this, and the function I have is this. Okay, so if I if I perform this operation, um, what you notice is I get i k to the exponent n multiplied by simply e to the exponent i k x. So here, this is the eigenfunction that I get back, and this is the associated eigenvalue. Um, as, you can, as you can see, um, finding eigenvalues sometimes are not that difficult. So now the main question, why do we even care about operators? Why are we talking about them? Well, it turns out that operators are actually very important. Um, and the second postulate of quantum mechanics states that for every observable, that means a physical quantity that you can measure in the lab, like position, kinetic energy, potential energy, um, all of those good things. So for every observable in classical mechanics, there corresponds a linear operator in quantum mechanics. So for us to transition from classical mechanical variables to quantum mechanical variables, we have to introduce operators, and specifically linear operators. 
So some of these transitions are as follows. So the position um, classical mechanical variable can be written as this operator and which just means multiply by x. The total energy can be written um, simply as the Hamiltonian operator which we looked at before and it's the sum of kinetic plus potential energies and it gives you this and we derived this quote unquote before. The kinetic energy is just this part of the Hamiltonian so this is so the Hamiltonian or the kinetic energy if you want to go to the quantum mechanical version the operator essentially involves multiplying um, the wave function with this quantity so you can follow along um, we'll discuss this in more detail later so f the important thing to note is that in quantum mechanics for every linear operator for instance this um, there, for every observable, for instance, energy, the total energy of the system, which is an observable, classical mechanical quantity, something that we're interested in in the lab, for every observable, there corresponds a linear operator. In this case, it's the Hamiltonian operator. So, so this is this is why we care about operators. It's because they help produce results that are meaningful in quantum mechanics. Okay, so the important thing to remember is that operators themselves are not physical quantities in quantum mechanics. Essentially, they're just, there's some, there's some cooking you can do on the wave function to produce um, like the result, uh, which is the energy. So they, they do something on the wave function and they give you the wave function back, but they also give you something else, which is the the physical quantity of the system that you're interested in so that begs an important question all operators uh, they can be imaginary or complex or whatever so that's why they can't be physical quantities themselves because they can be complex and and imaginary numbers um, so in order for something in order for it to be a physical variable it needs to correspond to a real number and that's important, so hold that thought. So the next postulate of quantum mechanics is actually very important. Um, it's a third postulate, and it states that if you measure, so the, for the any measurement of the classical mechanical observable, for instance, total energy, um, if it's associated with a quantum mechanical operator, A hat or Hamiltonian, the only values that you will ever observe in the lab are eigenvalues of the operator. Now, this is the important thing. So the operators are not physical quantities, but their eigenvalues are. And only the eigenvalues of the operator will be observed in the lab. Now, if you think of position, um, if, if you're in the free classical world, you can, you can run a 10 kilometer walk or run, right? And your position will change continuously. But in the quantum world, that's not possible. You're, you won't be able to run a thousand or a hundred or one kilometer just directly. Your positions will be dictated um, by your wave function. So you'll only be allowed to be in certain places, not everywhere. You can't go across a wide range um, of physical values. Okay, so that's the important thing. For every linear operator, the eigenvalues associated with it correspond to physical observables. And this is the third postulate of quantum mechanics. We'll talk about it a little bit more as we move on. So the only measured values of the observable, for instance, the total energy in nature, are eigenvalues of the total energy operator, Hamiltonian operator. So when the Hamiltonian acts on some wave function that is an eigenfunction, it produces a unique energy state that's unique for that wave function, and you get the wave function back. So for each unique psi of x, there's a unique energy associated. That's, that's, that's what I'm trying to point out here. Um, if this is psi and this psi are unique, then of course the energy states are also unique. Because if the energy states were the same, then they wouldn't be unique size. So 
now I've sort of been beating around one fact, and that's the fact that, okay, operators are actually imaginary and complex numbers, okay? So the important thing to note is that operators are only useful if they produce eigenvalues that are real in nature. If an operator produces eigenvalues, and if a linear operator produces an eigenvalue that is um, not real, it's imaginary or complex, then, then that doesn't really help our case. So the only way to guarantee that an operator will only produce real um, eigenvalues is if our linear operator is also something called a Hermitian operator. And we'll discuss this as we go on a little bit um, more. Right now, I just want to introduce the concept of what a Hermitian con operator is. So, But the important thing to note right now is if an operator is Hermitian, its eigenvalues are always guaranteed to be real. Okay, so an operator is said to be a Hermitian operator if it satisfies this condition. Don't worry about it right now. We'll actually drive this further on and it'll make more sense. Um, it's just I'm introducing it right now. So if you satisfy this criteria, then you're said to be a Hermitian function. And if you are a Hermitian function, your eigenvalues are always real. Okay. So now that this is done, next time we'll start discussing what psi fx is. Right now we discuss operators. Now we'll actually start discussing, well, what is psi fx? How is something psi fx? What does it mean? Um, how do you write it out? And so forth. Um, and we'll also start talking about the postulates of quantum mechanics. So in summary, we said that operators are defined by this formula. They act on some function f of x to produce a new function. Some operators have a property of being linear, and they are linear if they act on a sum of two functions, um, and they simply act on the functions themselves and not the constants multiplied or the coefficients of the, cons of the functions. So some linear operators have eigenvalues and eigenfunctions. So we're getting more specific. We have operators. Then we have linear operators. Then some linear operators have eigenfunctions and eigenvalues. Um, and basically, they have an eigenfunction and eigenvalue if they satisfy this equation. Now, the last thing is some linear operators that have eigenfunctions and eigenvalues um, are also Hermitian operators. And if they're Hermitian operators, their eigenvalues are always real. In order for something to be a Hermitian operator, it needs to satisfy this equation. Um, and then I satisfy, then I basically summarize that here is the linear Hermitian Hamiltonian operator, which is the classical mechanical variables quantum mechanical representation. Um, the eigenfunction of operator Hamiltonian is the quantum mechanical term, and it's the psi, which we'll talk about next time. Um, and it produces the eigenvalue of the operator, en, which is unique for each psi, um, and the eigenfunction back without any changes. And it's important to note that the eigenvalue is always real, um, and it's the only observed value in the lab corresponding to a physical reality.